AP Biology, Chapter 22, Evolution, Part 3. At this point, we're going to continue on with our notes on the sedimentary rock fossils we find in the different layers of Earth. Part 2 left off with the Precambrian era. So let's go ahead and uh, review what we have so far. All right. So remember that the oldest rocks that we have are 4.6 billion years old, and we use gradimetric dating to figure that out. That's the absolute age of a rock by measuring the ratio of the radioactive isotope to the decayed element it will become. For example, if our rock sample has half uranium, half lead, that means one half-life has gone by. And if that uranium has a half-life of 700 million years, the rock is 700 million years old. If there's a 1 to 3 ratio of uranium to lead, that's two half-lives, that would be 1.4 billion years old. At 3.5 billion years ago, uh, we have the first life, first fossils of life. They're bacteria spermatolites. I'm sure that you have a little star here. Uh, that's an important uh, uh, event in life during uh, the history of common time. The Precambrian is the oldest era on this uh, planet. It goes from 4.6 billion years ago to 540 million years ago. We decide when an era is over. And every time uh, there's a major extinction event, we, um, we call that the end of the era. The biggest extinction in the Earth's history was not the dinosaurs going extinct. It was at the end of Precambrian, and 90% of life during that time died out. It was thought that it might have been due to geologic activity, volcanoes and such uh, things. During the, uh, the uh, Cretaceous extinction, the one that was the dinosaurs died out, only 70% of life died out at that time, which is still a lot, but it wasn't a big one. At 2.7 billion years ago, we have the first eukaryotes. That was in the previous class. 1.5 billion years ago, we have photosynthesizers producing oxygen atmosphere. Before 1.5 to 1.7 billion years ago, the atmosphere was mainly carbon dioxide and other gases. The photosynthesizers, the living things on this planet, has changed the atmosphere over time to have more oxygen. If you were to take a time machine back before 1.5 billion years, uh, if you didn't bring an oxygen supply, you'd suffocate in that atmosphere. All right, so the next major event that we have in Earth's history is 550 million years ago. We have the first invertebrates, animals with no backbone. Things like trilobites become very common at that time. The Paleozoic is the next era. This uh, ranges from 540 million years ago to 250 million years ago. You don't have to have that memorized, but we'll go ahead and write that in. MY, of course, is million years, million years old, or we could also have MYA, million years ago. At 500 million years ago, we find the first fish, nothing like the fish we have in modern times. However, uh, these fish are the first uh, um, vertebrates that have a lower jaw that goes up and down. They're a bit more complex than invertebrates. However, of the vertebrates, the simplest animals with a backbone are fish. Then, 350 uh, million years ago, we find the first amphibians. Life starts to leave the water for the first time, making use of food sources on land, maybe getting away from predators, and that happens uh, next in our, our fossil layers. So the next vertebrate that we find are amphibians. So the order goes fish, amphibians, and the next one is reptiles. We have another extinction event at the end of the Paleozoic. And let's go ahead and write down at uh, 250 million years ago. Reptiles. Reptiles have evolutionary advantages over amphibians. They have thicker skin to prevent from drying out on land. They have a thick covering on the eggs, unlike amphibians, so they can live far away from water without their eggs drying out. So reptiles were able to colonize land in ways that amphib amphibians could not. Amphibians are stuck near the water because they have to lay their eggs in water and they, uh, some of their development happens in water. Then, at about 200 million years ago, write this in, we have the first mammals and birds. So the last uh, animals to evolve with backbones are mammals and birds. Now mammals uh, at this time were very small. During the dinosaurs, they were probably food for dinosaurs. So uh, mammals evolved from a reptile that had mammal-like features. It was a thoracid uh, reptile. Um, However, uh, and the hair on a mammal is basically modified scales. It's made of the same stuff, keratin. And we also have the first birds. 
Now you may have heard that birds evolved from dinosaurs. Most dinosaurs went extinct, so this is not all dinosaurs turning into birds. The vast majority of dinosaurs did not survive the, uh, the Cretaceous ex extinction. However, some groups of dinosaurs, a, or a group of dinosaurs, evolved into the modern birds. Birds still have some of their uh, uh, souvenirs from their reptilian past. They still produce eggs, like things like reptiles. And if you look at bird legs, they have scales on them, just like reptiles do as well. All right, and then let's go ahead and write in at 65 million years ago. That's kind of the key, uh, key event. We have 65 million years ago, dinosaur extinction. As far as why the dinosaurs went extinct, we think that it was an um, asteroid that hit. Now, it wasn't the asteroid that just kind of bowled them over like a bowling ball. What happened is what we think is that a large dust cloud was kicked up by the massive asteroid blocking the sun. If the sun is blocked, it's less light getting to the planet. Less light means less photosynthesizers are able to produce food, and they are the base of all food webs. So we're talking about a general collapse of food webs as a result of photosynthesizers not providing food for the herbivore dinosaurs that ultimately provide energy for those carnivore dinosaurs. So especially a big animal is going to need more food than a small animal. So a lot of those big animals went bye-bye during the 65 million years ago Cretaceous extinction. However, that's good news, folks. We are happy that dinosaurs went extinct because once all those dinosaurs went bye-bye, what happened was you'd have all these niches, all these areas that were now opened up. And there was a small furry critter that took advantage of that. It was called the mammals. So mammals diversified after the dinosaurs went extinct. We got a big chance to occupy niches that were previously occupied by those dinosaurs. So we should consider that a good thing because we benefited that from that. So the uh, one that we're in now, the era that we're in now, is called the Cenozoic. Let's write that in. By the way, the Mesozoic, meso means middle, so this is the middle era. Paleo means old, so that's the old era. This is called the age of fish. That doesn't mean it's only fish. It's just the more they were very common, uh, the most evolved creature that was common at the time. Reptiles, we're talking mainly the dinosaurs. Sometimes it's called the age of dinosaurs. The Cenozoic is called the age of mammals. And they are the most uh, complicated and common creature that we find. Well, not common, but um, they become common during the Cenozoic. During the Cenozoic, we have the things like the evolution of things like whales, uh, things like elephants and horses and all that other stuff that only happened after the dinosaurs went away uh, because that gave those organisms a chance to occupy niches that were previously occupied by the dinosaurs. So let's, uh, let's go on a little bit more. Um, we should be aware of this. 4.5, let's write this in, 4.5 million years ago is the oldest human-like fossil called Artificticus. Now this wasn't a human, but it was the ancestor to humans. Now you should notice something at this point. We have 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs went extinct. 4.5 million years ago are the oldest human-like fossils. So there's about a 60 million year gap between when the dinosaurs went extinct and when human-like creatures start to walk this planet. If you ever watch the Flintstones, the Flintstones don't tell an accurate story of life's history on this planet. Then about 100,000 years ago, we find the first modern fossils of humans. Let's write that in. 100,000 years ago, modern human fossils, things that would be almost indistinguishable from today's uh, humans. This is still before civilization. We didn't have civilization until about 15,000 years ago or so. And that is a, uh, a pretty good um, review of some of the major events in Earth's history. And pause for a second and copy this down. All right, so from this information, we can um, make a tree of life and figure out when the major groups of organisms on this planet kind of separate out from each other. If you remember, the, um, the way a new species starts is isolation and then adaptation to a new environment. What we'd like to do now is make a tree of life that will be useful when we talk about cladograms later that um, kind of go through major uh, events in Earth's history. All right, 
Let's get out a fresh sheet of paper. And at the very bottom of this paper, let's go ahead and um, put in the first uh, type of life we find, prokaryotes. I'll just leave it at that. Now, prokaryotes were the first life, but that branched off from other organisms. Do we still have bacteria today? Of course we do. So bacteria are not the same bacteria as they existed three and a half billion years ago, but they, um, they have evolved and they are a successful form of life, and we do have those prokaryotes, the archaeobacteria and eubacteria today. Let's go ahead and write down bacteria, and this will be the eubacteria. However, archaeobacteria also branch off um, a little bit later. So we're now putting both uh, bacterial kingdoms in. Then later on in Earth's history, we have eukaryotes. Eukaryotes, uh, of course, have uh, engulfed things like mitochondria and chloroplasts to make a more complicated cell, endosymbiotic theory. Here we have uh, major branching, and this uh, branching happened at the end of the Precambrian, um, or actually a little bit before the Paleozoic and Precambrian. One thing that we have is a new type of, uh, or one type of cell that was produced are the heterotrophic uh, eukaryotes. And those heterotrophic eukaryotes end up becoming the, um, the animals and the fungi, as well as heterotrophic proteins that we have on this planet. So animals, proteins that are heterotrophic, and fungi all evolved from a heterotrophic eukaryote. And that heterotrophic eukaryote should be represented right at this branching point. We also have the photosynthetic eukaryotes that eventually become the plants as well as the algae and photosynthetic proteins on this planet. So this is the, the separation between heterotrophs and um, photosynthesizers early on in Earth's history. Then we have the uh, invertebrates involved evolving uh, and after that the fish and other vertebrates. So from an invertebrate line we have um, fish and vertebrates evolving. This actually should be invertebrates right here too. Invertebrates. And then we have invertebrates evolving into what we have is the modern insects, crustaceans, and arachnids on this planet. Now there's more than just three groups of um, invertebrates, animals without backbones. However, these are the big three, and you should know these. We have arachnids, crustaceans, and insects. And really this branching point should have happened Arachnids, crustaceans, and insects all parted their separate ways very far back in time during the Paleozoic. All right, so we have our invertebrates. Uh, the other animals, the animal vertebrates, start with fish. Then from fish, we have the amphibians evolving. Of course, we have modern fish, so fish evolved into the modern fish we have today. Some fish evolved into the amphibians. Some of those amphibians evolved into the reptiles. However, we do also have modern amphibians as well, of course. The reptiles evolved into the birds, uh, modern reptiles, and the mammals, of which, are, of course, we belong to the mammal group. So let's take a few minutes and um, I'm going to copy this down. For all of these uh, separations of groups of uh, organisms, it's isolation, populations becoming separate from each other and not passing back genes, and then adaptation over and over and over again. If we were to put every species of organism on this planet, we would have two million branches on this tree. Two million plus branches on this tree. We're not putting two million plus branches. This is just the, the basic overview of how this thing's uh, split up over time. Here we have some transpositional fossils. Tiktaalik is a amphibian that we um, we got our four limb template. If you're wondering why we have four limbs, two arms and two legs, this is the first animal found in the past that had four limb uh, template that you're gonna see a picture of in a few minutes that, um, that we inherited from them. If you're wondering why we have five fingers and five toes, well, it's because that's what was passed on to our from our ancestors way back in time. <coughs> if the Simpsons were our ancestors, then we'd have four fingers. All right, this ends uh, part of your notes on chapter 22.